Bonjour à tous, je suis avec Sophie qui ne sait là pour son passage en France <rire> et euh, je vais lui poser quelques questions et donc euh, comme d'habitude je sous-titrerai tout ça puisque on parlera forcément en anglais. Sophie, hi. Hi. Or I guess I should say Madeleine. Oh yeah, you can say what you like. Okay. Just call me anything. You have an alter ego. I do. <laughs> so uh, first of all, um, on May 4th, uh, so two books of the Shopaholic series are coming out in France. Mm. Uh, so the first one is the seventh book called uh, Shopaholic to the Stars. Uh -huh. So uh, La Croix du Shopping à Hollywood. It's coming out in mass market paperback in France. And the second one is the eighth book yeah. of the Shopaholic series. So Shopaholic to the Rescue. Uh, donc La Croix du Shopping à la rescousse in, uh, in paperback in the his its first French edition. Mm -hmm. So I guess, are they going to be many more Becky's adventure? <laughs> oh, do you know what? It's, it's funny. There's a sort of, there's Becky's adventures in my head and then there's the Becky's adventures which make it into books. And I would say that Becky's adventures in my head will go on forever. Okay. My whole life, because wherever I am, I'm thinking, what would Becky do? Well, Becky would love this. Um, when it comes to books, I don't know how long I will write Becky for. As long as she feels fresh and people are interested, I will. But I have to say that my next project is not a Becky book, okay. um, because love her as I do. I also love writing new stories, new heroines, new situations and ideas and issues and and, and what have you. So um, I think it's really great to have a balance between Becky and non-Becky. Yeah, obviously. I guess you let your inspiration guide you. I do. I do. I do. I let my inspiration guide me in everything, pretty much, whether it's, you know, which book to write next or which pair of shoes to buy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, what else can you do uh, but listen to your own heart and your own voice? And um, with, with the writing, I just sort of, I have so many ideas always floating around and then I just wait for which one feels like the one I have to write okay. now. You recently came out with your first young adult book, yeah. uh, Finding Audrey, so Audrey uh, Retrouvé, which came out a couple months ago in France. What motivated you to write for a younger audience? Well, again, it was kind of the story that came first. Um, the characters, they, you know, they all kind of came into my brain at once. I, I, I've seen a lot of anxiety in my sort of around me. I, I read about it. My my children are teenagers, my oldest children. I always write what I see. If I see people shopping, I write about shopping. And if I see anxiety, I write about that. Um, and when I first started playing around with the idea and the story and the characters, I didn't know what kind of book it would be. But when I started writing it through the eyes of Audrey, who is a teenager and has got this massive journey, I thought, okay, this is a book for, the, for teenagers. It's about a teenage world. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and so it really came out of the story. Having said that, I think it's a book which, well, I know adults read it because yeah. I've met them. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's sort of about a family as much mm -hmm. as it's about a teenager. So although it is a young adult book, I really think it's a book for everybody. Yeah. It, it just came out of me seeing these issues and really wanting to, to write about them. Reading it, I found you had a really accurate vision of the reality of being a teenager. Oh, thank uh, you. Well, that, that, you know, that's yeah, nice really, to hear because, really. you know, um, I was, I suppose, channeling who I was when I was a teenager yeah. mm. and then having teenage children sort yeah, of tapping absolutely. into what it's like to be a teenager now, which is very different. Yeah. Do your own kids help you better understand youth? Definitely, yeah. definitely. I mean, it's it's one of the real joys actually of having children who are a bit older that you can actually talk to them about the world, yeah. find out what they think, see how they operate in the world, which is, you know, a, a different. I mean, their use of social media, the whole video game yeah. thing, which is really not <laughs> me at all, but I I saw it and I, and I, I got them to actually to help me sort of with the creation of a fictional computer game and what yeah. would it be and what would they refer to and you know I didn't want to get anything wrong because yeah, I knew absolutely. they would be my harshest critics if I got something wrong they'd be like no one would say that <laughs> you're so lame so I guess you you are um, you're also inspired by um, the, the famous uh, youtuber PewDiePie well I know of him I mean <laughs> the gamer. 
<laughs> exactly. I mean, my my one of my my son is is you know he's very into computer games and he's always sort of showing me that people can make millions from yeah. this and they can do this and that. And I mean, just like the mother in Finding Audrey, the idea that you would sit yeah. and watch somebody's commentary on games, I find baffling. But that's a thing. <laughs> Fine, you know. And I think you just have to sometimes think, okay, I don't understand that, but. You know, that's what the world is yeah, today. Yeah, that's the thing. Are some situations with Audrey's mother inspired by your actual life routine? Well, <laughs> um, I have to say there is a bit of me in her. With the, the maybe not as crazy. Not as crazy, <laughs> but with the kind of oh my god, vitamin yeah. D! Quick, everyone needs to have vitamin D or, or whatever yeah. it might be. I I do um, sort of. Well, I'm just an obsessional person, really. So one minute I'm obsessing about, you know, a pair of shoes, <laughs> and the next minute I'm obsessing about have my children got enough vitamin D? Because I've just read a story about it. And In they, a magazine. Yeah, and exactly. And they do tease me okay. about that. Having said that, um, I've met quite a few other teenage boys, and they've all said, "You modelled that on my mum, didn't you?" <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people think it's their mother. I think there's a lot of us mothers around, yeah, like Anne. Yeah, um, absolutely. Did you like the experience and the feedback uh, that came after that? Oh, do you know, it's been a really overwhelming experience mm -hmm. publishing Finding Audrey because it is um, a bit darker than some of my other books and yeah. it does tackle some you know, real issues and I think it's very personal. And I've had the most incredible reader response. I've had very emotional responses. Even last night I was at a reading and a lovely girl came up and really got quite emotional, said, I, you know, I thought you were speaking directly to me and I've highlighted some quotes and they've really helped me. And so um, it's been incredibly rewarding, actually. Um, and I'm, I'm just so glad that I did it. Would we expect more young girl books from you? I would future? love that. It's been <laughs> such a positive experience. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, I I have an idea. I have several ideas. Um, so it, 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 with me, it's always a matter of when do I slot this in? When you know, time for me yeah. is the big issue. You I, have a lot of books. <laughs> I'm doing so much, and yeah. there are so many ideas that I want to tell. So it's just a question of organizing my time. It's a bit like Tetris, fitting yeah. in all the bits. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So obviously you are well known for chocolate novels mm. and uh, you write with a lot of success. So you also write more classic novels under the name of Madeleine Wickham. Uh, what do you enjoy the most? Uh, does it depend from your actual mood when you start writing or do you like switching between chocolate novels and classic ones? Do you know, the truth is I always like what I'm working on at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm always most excited about either the story I'm just writing or the story I'm about to tell okay. that no one even knows about. Mm -hmm. And in terms of style, you know, I like writing in every style. Um, I think I just like to match up the style with the way that the story goes. What I would do as, as Sophie is I write first person and I do love the intimacy of that and the connection. I think that that's quite addictive. Once you've started writing in that way, yeah, it's quite hard to go back to the sort of third person, mm -hmm. multi-character yeah. story because they aren't quite as intense. Okay. If you had the opportunity uh, to branch out in a whole other genre, what would you dream to write? <laughs> oh, wow. Like a completely, a completely different thing. Completely different thing. Um, I would love to write a thriller, oh. like a really edge of your seat, tense yeah. thriller and many many years ago I actually had the idea for a thriller and I started writing a few chapters um, and I showed it to my agent who said um, you know what the plot is great but it's too breezy mm -hmm. um, all your characters are too nice <laughs> <laughs> you know they're it just these really you have to be and dark and gritty <laughs> and I was like Mm, dark and gritty, not sure about that. So I gave up on that idea. But I love, I love the kind of the plotting of these okay. thrillers where you're just like, oh, no way, no way. I, yeah. That really appeals to me. So if I could do that, I would love it. What was it like to see your book, so Confession of a Shopaholic, become a movie? Uh, was it stressful? Did you keep a constant eye on the filmic process? Or were you not able to have an opinion on it? Well, it was 
all that you've said and more. It was surreal. <laughs> it was amazing. It was stressful. It was fantastic. It was um, unlike anything I've ever experienced. And uh, so for a long time, I was nothing to do with the process. It was just going on in Hollywood okay. for years, years. Um, and then when they started shooting, they suddenly kind of woke up and said, oh, uh, you know, come to the rehearsal. Oh, stay on the set. Be there for the whole shoot. We want your opinion. Okay. So I went from kind of nothing to everything. Um, and it was amazing to just see the film being shot and yeah. to uh, watch that process and, and also to put in my feedback. And, yeah. uh, and that I was really glad that I was able to do that. Um, and it was just a real blast yeah. to see a film being made. So in the end, you liked it? Yeah, I thought yeah. it was very funny, very colorful. Mm -hmm. Isla Fisher is great. Yeah. Do you wish to renew the experience and to see another of your work adapted to a movie, maybe, or a TV show? Yeah, no, that would be really good fun. And mm -hmm. I've got a couple of projects in mm -hmm. development at the moment. Um, Can you keep a secret, uh, Les yeah. Petits Secrets d'Emma? Yeah. Um, and um, Remember Me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, both in development. Mm -hmm. So I'm, great. you know, hoping that that will happen and then, you know, it'll be another great experience. Absolutely. For what kind of objects or things are you like Becky? Could ah! you potentially splurge on without any control on it? Uh, shoes, clothes, jewelry, or maybe books? Oh, <laughs> do you know, but all of them, but just in turn. <laughs> I'm very like Becky that I get okay. into one thing mm -hmm. and I sort of obsess and then I'm done with that and I move on to something else and I obsess. So like when I knew I was going to have a daughter, mm -hmm. I went berserk on baby clothes. I She had so many little dresses. Yeah. It's un, unreal. <laughs> um, and then books, I'll go into a bookshop and I yeah. can't just buy one book. I have to just buy a whole, you know, basket of them. We are bookaholics. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how you know, books, you just can't stop, yeah, can you? Yeah, absolutely. And books don't feel like sort of shopping. No, uh, they're in a different yeah. category altogether, I feel. No, um, okay. Yeah, so I'm a bit like her. Or, you know, then there'll be cushions. I mean, it could be mm. anything. Or vitamin D pills for my children. <laughs> like, what's the best one? And what else? Supplements. I mean, honestly, if you know, you get me getting yeah. on supplements, I will turn into a Becky-holic on the, whole the health food <laughs> thing. <so. laughs> So thank you very much for this interview. Thank you for your time. Well, thank you. And, it's been uh, fun. Yeah, it's it's been a pleasure to meet you, and you're very nice. So. Oh well, aren't you too? Thank you. <laughs> so, and good luck for your for your last book. Thank you, and good luck with everything that you're doing. <laughs> thank you for watching. Merci d'avoir regardé. Bye. Et puis à bientôt. Salut.